Garnacho has announced himself on world stage. He has just delivered a moment of absolute brilliance and he has broken Fulham's heart wide open. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the MU stand. Fulham 1, Manchester United 2. What a game. I mean, it's been an unbelievable game. Alejandro Garnacho's last gap winner seals a dramatic victory for Eric Ten Hag's side before the World Cup. It's been, I mean, where do you start from here? I mean, where do you start from here? I mean, in terms of performance, I think we did okay. Uh, the first half, first half, we we kind of dominated them. It was it was almost 50-50, but we created a couple of chances. Uh, I think we started off with a goal from Erickson. That was actually a good pass by uh, Bruno Fernandes to find Erickson for the tap in. That was actually this goal right here. You're looking at it. So it was a beautiful pass from Bruno Fernandes to set up Erickson for that tap in. And you would think that after that, we would just go on and win comfortably. But that actually wasn't the case. I mean, we struggled in the second half. Um, Fulham, they, they, they start gaining confidence uh, going into the second half. I don't know if uh, the changes we made in the second half has actually caused us to be more vulnerable to uh, Fulham's attack. I don't know, maybe that's the reason why, but in the second half, we really, really suffer. But let's let's just quickly go around the team and quickly take a look at all the players' performance. Let's start with David De Gea. I think David De Gea, he made a good save from the start, a uh, deflected effort at nil-nil. That could have been a very costly one. It deflected off of Malasia. He made a good save uh, to deny uh, Carlos Vinicius and Tim Ream uh, before actually being uh, beaten by Daniel James in that second second half goal. Uh, Terrell Malasia. Okay, let's talk about Malasia. I mean, Malasia actually, he looked very uncomfortable to me. I don't know about you, but what do you guys think? Let me know down below if you think Malasia actually played well in that right-hand side because I thought we suffered a lot. Fulham really attacked us on that right-hand side because they knew that Malasia is not comfortable playing in that position. And that was the case. That was the case. He, he really struggled against Williams uh, in the first half. Uh, he was out of the picture for that Daniels uh, James equalizer as well in the second half. I think he, I don't know, average performance for me, uh, Malasia. I don't want to hammer him down too much, but he tried his best. That's not his favorite position. That's not. That's not where he plays, so you can't really blame him. We had nobody on the bench, like Dalot to suspended, so Juan Basaka should be coming in, but Juan Basaka is not even in the squad, so what can you do? There's nothing you could do. Uh, Victor, Victor Lindelof, I think he was vindicated uh, for his selection as a centre-back over Harry Maguire. He defended respectively uh, well, I think. Now, he did have some tests. He had to clear up some headers. I think he did well. He did well. Uh, Lissandro Martinez, uh, United's best player again. I mean, defensively, he tried to protect Luke Shaw as well on that left-hand side. He really did well against Vinicius as well, uh, in the first half and in the second half. Um, also, he tried to find a pass in the attack. He had some long ball passes to Martial, I remember, in the first half. He's a, he, by the way, he's a very good passer. Sandro Martinez, solid performance by him. Luke Shaw, bright in the attacking third and should have had an assist for the, uh, a cross for Anthony Martial, who basically just hits it over the bar. Martial should have scored that chance, by the way. This is the chance I'm talking about. Martial, clear header. He should have scored that one at what nil, 40 minutes in. Should have scored that. It was a beautiful cro uh, cross by Luke Shaw, but Anthony Martial misses. Uh, Casemiro, so Casemiro actually uh, converted into actually a, a defense, into attack with, with the move Eriksen scored from. And actually solid in front of the back four, protecting that back four. 
He does that really well. I mean, game in, game out, Casemiro, you know exactly what you're going to get when you play Casemiro. He's just going to protect that back four for you. And he did exactly the same in this game as well. Uh, solid game, solid game from Casemiro for me. Uh, Christian Eriksen, he scored his first uh, United goal to put to put us 1-0 up. And should have gotten another goal just before halftime. Bruno just sets him up for an easy tap-in, similar to the one he scored in the first half. But he just missed a wide. That could have just basically made us really comfortable. I mean, we we had to suffer in this game, and I didn't want that. Like, we're winning one nail down. Let's just go and punish them and destroy the team. But we weren't able to do that. And we made life difficult for our team. Uh, and Eriksen's miss is one of the chances that we could have just put this game to bed that uh, wasn't to be. Uh, Anthony Langa. So Anthony Langa possibly selected uh, to defend more and the attacking, like I mentioned in the watch along, if you didn't watch the watch along, I did mention that Malasia is playing at the right. So because of that, Ilanga had to play on the right to protect Malasia. I think when he came off, the team suffered a little bit in terms of defensively that offensively Ilanga hasn't done much. He doesn't have the quality. I mean, we know Ilanga is not the answer for Manchester United. We need more quality. We need better players than Anthony Ilanga to be starting week in, week out for Manchester United. And he's not even a good backup, in my opinion. I think he should be loaned out or he should be sold. Uh, Bruno Fernandes, I think, back to his best role and back to his best in the first half. He created a loads of chance for Ericsson and for Rashford, I believe. But the goal we conceded... I don't know who you're going to blame, but Bruno had something to do with that. He controlled the ball from going out and he controlled it. He lets the ball uh, stay in play. And because of that, Fulham took the ball and went on the counter and scored. So you can blame Bruno Fernandes for that. But for the goal, I think Luke Shaw could be at fault as well. He was just sleeping in that back, uh, back post uh, when Daniel James just came uh, in front of him and, and, and scored. Uh, Marcus Rashford, I think Marcus Rashford, it was, I don't know. I don't know how to rate Marcus Rashford's performance. I think he was, he was not that good, to be honest with you. He really wasn't good. Uh, he was an average performance. He did have a chance, a clear chance with the goalkeeper. He missed, he missed a couple of chances in this match as well. This is the problem with Marcus Rashford. You just can't rely on him consistently. He misses a lot of chances. Uh, he did okay on the left hand side, but not good. Not 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 to the expectation of most fans. I think he should be giving us eight, nine out of ten performances, and he's not doing that. Anthony Martial, uh, as effective as he has been, his handful appearances. Uh, they, they, I mean, Martial is dependable of the front man, and he wasted. I mean, a lot of chances in the first half as well. So, Martial is not a hundred percent. I think he's going to get better if we continue to select Martial. He does have this uh, link-up play. It is the type of forward that Eric Ten Hag would like to use. He really, really like to use Martial. He is the type of striker that uh, Ten Hag wants. So I hope he's going to improve. I hope he's going to improve. He didn't have the best of games against uh, Villa, Asta Villa as well when he came on. Uh, so I think... I think uh, we just need to continue to play him. I mean, the World Cup is coming now, so he's not really going to have any sort of games. He's just going to be training. So hopefully he gets stronger uh, when we come back from the World Cup. Okay, let's talk about the subs to Scott McTominay. Um, Scott McTominay, that was actually a curious substitute, to be honest with you. Scott McTominay, he came on as a... <clears throat> As a, as a 10, basically, he took off Ilanga and put put Scott McTominay in, but Scott McTominay didn't do well. He, ha he actually had a clear-cut chance. Let me just try to find the screenshot here. He did have a clear-cut chance, Scott McTominay, to score. Uh, and he missed. This, this is the chance, actually. I have it right here. This was a big chance that Scott McTominay at 1-1, 82nd minutes in, free header. He missed a wide-open goal there. Uh, not good enough, not good enough again. We don't want to be relying on Scott McTominay. I'm okay with having him on the bench, but he's not, he's not the guy to be starting week in, week out. 
let's talk about the legend the man oh by the way before i talk about garnacho garnacho had a penalty what do you guys think about this penalty was it a penalty was it not a penalty let me know down below in the comment section i thought it was a 50 50 i thought it could have been called it could not have been called but the referee decided not to call it i mean it is what it is it's fine we just have to accept it and move forward but garnacho man the legend this guy has scored the winner in the last minute of the game. I mean, that is just incredible. This guy has talent. We need to continue to play him. We need to continue uh, to start him in games. I don't think, I don't know why Eric Ten Hag decided not to play him from the start. He needed to start. He had a wonderful game uh, against Aston Villa. He should have started this game, but Eric Ten Hag decided to use him from off the bench and it worked out for him. He scored the winner and we went to one. But that is it, guys. This has been my match reaction. Let me know that down. Uh, let me know in the comment section who you think is your man of the match. I think Garnacho was my man of the match. He deserves it. I know he played 20 minutes or less, but he deserves it. He is the match winner regardless. So, but do let me know in the comment section who was your man of the match. And don't forget to smash that like on the, on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. And that is it, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.